Hello. Hi, everybody. I'm just going to wait a little bit um, for a little bit more people to come in. So if you guys want to introduce yourself in the chat, you can. Just a couple more minutes here. How's everyone doing today? If you're doing good, send me a thumbs up or some other emoji if you're not feeling a thumbs up. All righty, let's get started, shall we? So we don't waste your time. Hi, Biz. <laughs> um, okay, I just like to tell you this before I start. So I just got a seven-week-old puppy. So if you hear a lot of barking, I apologize, but <laughs> that might happen. So my name is Sue, and I'm a Minneapolis-based graphic designer. Um, I'm actually Dubsado's the graphic designer right now, and I love them. I love Dubsado. Um, I was born and raised in Malaysia. I uh, went to school in Iowa, and now I'm in Minnesota. So I work with entrepreneurs and business owners. I do strategic branding as well as packaging and print collateral. So those are my three specializations. Um, but... Um, essentially, I work with anyone, and this is the easiest way for me to go about business. I have a full-time job as well, so and I work with Dubsado and my own freelance business. So Dubsado makes my life so much easier, so I'm so glad you guys are here because you guys are going to love this, I promise. So I'm going to start sharing my screen and showing you how everything is so if you guys have questions along the way feel free to type it in the chat but know that i won't answer them until the end just so we can keep things going but i'll i will answer them in the end so if you want to type them in go ahead um not a big deal i can do that whenever um so just so you know um so this is up saddle let me know if you guys can see it okay by the way. <laughs> um, so this is how it looks like when you log in. Um, and this looks empty right now, but you can do a lot of stuff with it. So obviously, if you have things in it, it's going to look very filled out. You, you can fill out your financial goals. You can see your open invoices and so forth. Um, and I'm going to go back and forth just to make sure you guys are okay. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start with my lead capture. So what a lead capture is, is when you're um, someone that's interested, they fill in your um, lead capture form. Mine is on the website. So um, I clicked on forms and the lead capture I wanted to show you guys is this one, website lead capture. So I clicked on it and this is exactly how it looks on the back end. So you can see how it works. Super easy. So when someone goes to my website, they're going to see this um, and they're going to fill it out. So this is how it looks like for me, how I set it up. This is an image um, text box. This is an image as well. 
This is super fun. And it's a two column item that you can place in there. Um, and you can see, I just have it really simply set up so the client can just fill it up and make it super easy for them to fill up. Basically, once they fill it out, they hit submit and I get it right away. Um, and I will bring them to a workflow. Um, if you guys don't know what a workflow is, I think of it as like a setup automation. So because I am so busy all the time, I need something to take my like plate, some something to take off my plate. So uh, I set this up separately so that when someone submits this form on my website, I don't have to type an email every single time someone submits a form. So this is the lead capture workflow that I set up. So once someone submits that form for me, um, they will get a generic auto response email. Um, and that email I've already typed and saved. I'm going to go kind of going back and forth here. So it's going to be a little confusing. So if you have questions, just keep typing questions um, and I'll answer them at the end. So they will get a, um, once they send me the form, they will get an email um, that I already typed and it's in canned emails. It's already typed up. And that email here is this one. So I already typed it up ahead of time. This is what I typed up. Um, like, okay, I see you. Thanks for reaching out. Um, and one part I love about Bilopsado is this. If you see these curly bracket things, um, they are called smart fields. And basically, I don't have to worry about filling up a client's name or information every single time. So as long as I have a curly bracket item, um, Dubsado will fill it in for me. How awesome is that? So for example, I want the client's full name instead of first name. That's all I click. And it will auto generate. Like, how awesome is that? So you can do that with so many different smart fields. This is the email they get after a lead capture. Um, and so if they get this in the, um, so I'll reply them within a day or two with a personalized email. I This email is just let them know that, hey, I got your email. Um, I'll respond to you soon. So if you have not implemented an auto response email, this might be a really good option for you. So this is what you see. Submit email. They get a new lead. That's the email that you just saw. And then I will send them the email within a day. So I have this set up as well. So you can see send email one day after they sent the auto generated email. And that email I have already started as well. I always include something personal based on what they filled up in the form. So this is called lead follow up. This is Again, another can email that I already typed up. Um, and this is me saying, hey, I got your email. This thanks for requesting our services. Um, and I always bold stuff that I need to put in. So because they answer personal questions in the lead capture form, I would insert something here. Um, I would insert something here. And I will insert a specific service guide that they requested for. Um, and then in this person, this email, I always include a scheduler link. And that is the best thing ever because um, it allows my client to just see my availability and schedule my um, the times right away. And they get a Zoom link right away. So we don't need to go back and forth like, hey, are you, are you available at this time? Are you available at this time? Like we, Dubsado just takes away that five emails thread. So I know everyone would appreciate that. Um, yeah, so going back to that new lead workflow. So they get, they sent me the form, they get the auto generic email response that I typed up. And then within a day, we'll send them that personalized email that I send my type up as well. And you're gonna see this approve button. That is because I had it set up in a way 
where I said I require approval before they send it out automatically. And the reason why I did that because I need to insert, I need to type in something personal. I need to, you know, personalize this email to each client in its own way. But because I already set this up as a can email, it makes things so much easier. Like I don't need to worry about what to type. Da, 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 da. This makes things so much easier for me. So if you're ever kind of just worried about, oh man, I need to make sure that email is fine. You have the opportunity to say, hey, I want this to, I need to approve this before it sends out. So this is what you see. That's why it has to approve. So once it gets to this stage, it sends me an email reminding me, say, hey, should I send this out? If I click approve, it sends it out. Um, and the next step of my new lead is we all know sometimes like when we send out a email, a client, a prospective client doesn't respond. And sometimes we forget to follow up with them as well because we're busy too, all right? So I created a to-do after that email um, to remind me to see if the client actually has submitted the questionnaire and scheduled a call with me. So this is the to-do I created. So after, like this is seven days after I send that email. Um, this is an email reminder that will be sent to me to check if that client has submitted and scheduled a call. If yes, I will cancel the next step in the workflow. If no, I will click complete the step and the next follow up email will send. So this is a really good way for someone that like doesn't always have a, a list or like a step-by-step -step item right away because this is automated. It helps me take the like headache out of it. Um, so yeah, so if the client did not, still hasn't responded, I had it set up in the fact that they will send an email um, to remind the client like, hey, and this is the email that I typed up already that's in there. So it will auto send it to them after X amount of days that I set up. And it just says, hey, are you reached out last week? Um, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, and here's a free consult call. Here's my schedule link. You can schedule a call with me. Um, if you don't respond anymore, I won't reach out anymore just to respect you. So it just kind of keeps things going while I'm doing other things. So if you're kind of just not sure how to, you know, streamline certain things, workflows are a really good way for you to do that. Um, yeah. So and then after that, sometimes people still don't respond. So I created another to-do list to remind me, um, did they respond to that last email? If not, I will archive their lead, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, and then I will show you what the schedule looks like. The scheduler is amazing. I love it. Um, I use this all the time so that I don't have to worry about going back and forth. I personally don't like digging through emails. Um, so this helps me and you can send your client like a specialized link as well if you do not want to send it through Dubstado. Um, so I have two forms set up. One's the free consultation and one's for an existing client call. So I just title the name. And you can adjust like what time duration you want this to be. I like mine between 45 minutes. So that's what I always set it up with. And then you can adjust when can you like your appointment be scheduled. I like running the window just because my schedule changed quite a bit. So I can kind of just come back to the schedule every X amount of days and edit out times that would not work for me. Some people just leave it as fixed date range so you can so they can schedule it from this to this. Um, I like to stay rolling day window. Um, I love being able to adjust the times that I'm available. So for example, if I wanna add Friday availability um, and I'm available from 7, 15 a.m. to 10 p.m. I will say add times and if, July 31st is the only time I'm available from 7.15 to 10 a.m. I will click only 7 and then it does that for me, which is amazing. So, but if I wanted to do, 
9 to 11 a.m. at times all Fridays. All Fridays. And it adds all the Fridays for the next rolling window that I have. So you can see it auto does that for me. And you can take it out anytime. So if I want to take out 7.30 to 9 on this specific Thursday, I can do that. Um, I love this feature. So once someone books that time slot, show me as available or busy, I always leave it a busy because um, why not? Um, location, you can input like an address or URL. I personally just put it here like I'm going to do a Zoom video call, but I insert the link um, in the bottom in the email so they can click it easily. Um, and then when they schedule an email, um, I send them a confirmation email. And this is also a can email that you can pre-type before or um, it already has a template for it too. So if you're not sure how to do that um, and you see these curly brackets again, which I absolutely love. Um, it's auto-populated. So my job title that I archived probably was um, branding project. So for, let's say, Full Bloom Creative. So it will be, when it shows up in the client's inbox, it will be schedule an appointment for branding project with Full Bloom Creative. So it takes up, again, another like step that's kind of takes time from our schedule. Um, and you can see the curly brackets again here that I like using. Um, and here it includes the scheduler appointment calendar link. This allows them, this allows them to say add to their calendar and stuff. So they can just add it to their phone so they don't forget. Um, and you can see more curly brackets here. These are all like smart fields that I love using. But basically what this does is it gives them the this gives them the date that they scheduled and the time that they scheduled. And I gave them a Zoom link here so they can easily access it. So once they get this email, when the call is coming, they click on it, we're ready to go. Um, this is, again, it's my curly brackets, but it's my brand signature. Um, I already had it saved. So every time it has that, it will auto-populate my brand signature. Don't need to worry about. So just kind of like a Google Suite signature thing. Um, and then below here, I absolutely love this um, because it allows. Sorry, that happens from time to time. Um, <laughs> technology. But so it allows them to. Curly brackets again. It allows them this button. It shows up as a button. It allows them to reschedule their appointment right away from the same email if they need to. And then this allows them to cancel the appointment if they need to. Um, it makes things so, so much easier um, that you don't have to go back and forth again with 10 emails just to schedule and cancel, reschedule an appointment, and especially with times like this, which I absolutely love. Um, and that's the same thing with my free consultation as well. It's just um, different time availability. Um, but I think it's pretty much straightforward. Um, and then I will show you kind of the payment schedule, how that's set up. So if you're someone that does payment plans, which I do, um, this will be super helpful so you don't have to figure out math. I'm not good at math. No one wants to figure out math. So uh, this takes the headache out of it. So a lot of my clients end up doing like the half now and then half later. So we'll do this and I'll kind of show you how it is like back in. So how, did, how I set it up was 50-50. This is the title how I set it up. And you can set it up the way you want it to be. So I'll click on this and show you. So you can be like, due date, I want it to be, right now I had it set immediately after applied to invoice. So immediately after I applied it into invoice, it'll tell them due date is today. You need to pay half of it right now. Um, or you can do fixed. Um, the due date could be, maybe you're wanting it to be a week from now you can totally do that. So when your client looks at your invoice, it will see what the due date is, which is super helpful. And um, I love this because you can add a reminder to remind your client that your um, that invoice is coming up, due date is coming up, please pay. 
So that's the first one. So I don't do a, um, a reminder for that because they usually have to put a payment down before they get on my calendar. Um, it's usually the second, third, therefore after payments that I add a reminder and I'll show you how that is as well. Um, and then I had it set up as immediately after job. So what that is, is right after I sent them the their final files, um, I set it as that and then it triggers the payment schedule. It sends them again, like it's due on this date. So the remainder is set. Um, and I'll show you how I do this. So add a reminder, remind them, and I'm gonna be set it as relative because I wanna remind them two days before their due date. So they know it's coming, um, not before, not after, not after. I guess no one wants to send them a reminder after the due date unless they have to. So I set up two days before the due date, they get it. Um, and this is a canned email that I typed up prior as well. So I all I'm going to do is send them a payment reminder email from me um, and apply. That's about it. Honestly, it's as easy as can be. And um, just showing you how the form plan is as well. Um, basically, um, I set up the same way you can see. So they pay the invoice today, let's say, and then that will trigger the next date. So the one month from today's date, the other invoice would be due two months after the other would be due and then three months after the other would be due. So that makes it super easy um, and easy to get going. Um, okay, so what if someone sends me a lead capture form, they schedule a call. Um, the next thing I have them do is typically we go on a um, consult call and before they schedule a consult call with me, they have to fill in this form. I call it the new lead intake questionnaire um, because I want to know a little back end about their business before I jump on the call with them. Um, you don't want it to seem like you're very disinterested in your business. Um, you want to be prepared. So this is my way to be prepared. Um, my brand is very white space, colorful, so you can tell that from here. So this is the form they fill before they schedule the call. Um, and it's just very simple questions, um, generic questions, basic questions that anyone would ask. Um, and one thing I like to ask them to make sure we're a good fit is to have them review my work, paste links there. Um, these are fun because you can have check boxes. Um, and this is the back end of how it looks like. Um, how to set that up. Um, and basically that is it. Once they fill it out, all they do is submit. Um, and I'll show you how I build a two column thing really quick. So you can see, um, all you have to do is click columns and it auto populates right here. I don't like to show the title, so I will uncheck that. You can also do a four column or one column. Let's do a four, uh, two column right now. And I will add text. I will say, hello, everyone. Literally, you can type anything you want to be there. So uh, fonts that are here. Um, and I will drag this into that one column. And let's see, for the next column, I want to do check boxes. So I will click on them to edit it. Um, so I want it to be required so the client always fills it up. And then I want it to be formatted vertically. So it makes a difference. So if you want it horizontally, it stays that way, vertically. And then I will drag it in here. And that's it. Um, Dubsado makes it so easy um, and organized. Um, so I would definitely recommend you looking at it. So they fill this up. So the capture, they fill this up, schedule the call with me, we're all set. Um, and then after that, if I feel like, hey, we're a great fit, um, let's get on with our proposal. That's when I jump into a project proposal. 
um, and this is lengthy, but um, the idea is to wow them. Um, so if you get all these back end um, things set up right, it's only going to flow smoother and take time off your plate, if that makes sense, from your business. So this is how my project proposal is set up. This is an image, um, and it's pretty much as easy as can be. So this is how I upload an image. I add an image. Um, I click on it, and you can upload images, um, have your margins, alignments, width, upload, really straightforward for you. Um, so this is how my proposal looks like. Um, I changed this. Um, and I try to go as in depth as possible. This is an image. Um, and this is type that I typed in here through a text box over here. Um, again, an image and text. Um, I try to include as much detail as possible so they're not um, kind of overwhelmed and also shocked from certain things. Image. And then this is a three column text box that I showed you earlier is a two column. This is a three column image. And then this is a two column, but it has three rows. So, um, and then these are just normal text boxes that I changed the color to. You can change the color very easily right here. Um, you can insert your own hex code. You can add a background, um, basically anything you can ever think of. And image, again, two columns. If you haven't noticed, I love my two columns. Um, and then here, um, I always ask my clients right away from their proposal, like, are you okay with me sharing in progress work? And this is a yes or no um, checkbox, which is right here, yes or no. So you click on it, it will populate. And all I do is type the question, make it required, set yes or no. Um, so. And then image, this is a three column. And then this is an image as well. And the last step, I usually have them fill in this questions um, so that I know where they're at after the proposal. So this again is that yes or no question that I showed you earlier. Um, and this is a short answer. Um, this is a yes or no question again, short answer, short answer, and yes or no. Basically, after they review this proposal, I will be able to know where they stand with it. But if they are not um, ready, this is where my other workflow comes in. So I call this workflow my onboarding workflow um, because it just makes things flow so much smoother for me. Um, and you're going to see this right here the onboarding workflow. So basically, once someone, once I send someone the um, proposal, I put this workflow in action. Um, what it does is it stops everything else before, and I send that form. You can tell this is the form that I just showed you. Send that form, and then again, I included an approval thing. So because I, I have edits that I need to make, um, I want them to email remind me before I send it to a client. Um, and this is my another canned email that I typed up earlier. Here's the proposal. Um, again, this is something I need to change, which is why I have, um, I need this email before I send it out. Um, and then so one step that I created to do um, in three days um, to check if the client responded um, or accepted the proposal. So this to do again is to remind me to check um, because sometimes we just forget. So after I check, I'm like, they didn't respond. Um, I'm not sure where they are. I will, this auto sends them the proposal reminder. Um, so I don't need to do it by myself. So this is another canned email that I already typed up and it just reminds them, hey, this is an automated email telling you that the proposal is expiring soon. Um, so if you wanna do this, let's go. If not, let's see how that goes. Um, sometimes it 
takes a while for them to respond, so that's okay. I'm sorry for all the barking if you hear it. <laughs> um, and then I created another to-do list um, to see after that first reminder if they responded. If not, I have another email going out. But if yes, I don't need to go to another step. So it's basically ready to go. Um, but basically, usually if I send a reminder email, the client basically books right away. So um, when they put a deposit down, I have it here to activate the portal. Um, what a client portal is with Dubsado is amazing because it basically is a hub for all these documents so your client can access everything in one spot. So they can log in with their own email and their own password and um, they will be able to see things that they need to finish, emails, contact information, um, basically anything that you want in there. Um, and then I use Asana um, to onboard my client and kind of just use it as a project management um, tool, if that makes sense, that, that we can go back and forth on. So this just helps me create a to-do list to say, to remind me, hey, prep Asana for that client. So there's things that needs to be edited. So this is that. Um, and then after that, it also sends me a reminder to adjust the invoice due dates for the client. Um, you just need to double check things certain times. Um, but basically, if these things are set up, all you need is this little to do to tell you like, oh, I'm done and you can get it set up with. Yeah. So after onboarding, that's basically it. Um, and then we will go to forms again. <laughs> Lots of forms. But um, and then I'll show you this contract. But these forms are pretty much similar in their own way. Um, because in order to book a, a, on my calendar, they have to sign a contract. And this is my contract. Um, again, you're going to see this curly brackets. They will auto fill my client's name, my client's company name, email, phone. Um, if I wanted, let's say something else, client's um, shipping address. There we go. It will do that. Um, again, here, this is for me. It will fill out my username, which is Full Bloom Creative, my name, my email, my brain phone. And this is set up as a text box. Basically, all the contract, <clears throat> excuse me, contract um, information that needs to be in there. Um, so I'm going to scroll all the way down <laughs> because it's a lot. Um, and then... Um, I have them initial here, which you can do by adding an initial. You can edit the wording, which is super helpful. And then we have the signature field. Um, and then I have the second one set up to be mine. So you can check this if this is for you. If not, uncheck it. So pretty much straightforward here. Um, and you can add things like a drop free response drop down box. Um, I personally just haven't had to use it. So that's okay. Um, but everyone uses it in their own way. So this is how the drop down box looks like on the back end. Add your options. You can do it as required. And basically they will be able to select it right after. Um, so that's super helpful. That's a contract. Legally binding, all good. Um, I think we're slowly almost getting done here. So I'll get to your questions in a bit. So if you have questions, just keep them coming in the chat box and I'll answer them in a bit. Um, so after that, once a client gets started, I give them the brand discovery questionnaire. Um, and this is lengthy too, but I just set it up in a, for in a way where it's easy for them to fill out. Um, I don't like it to be heavily branded just because it's about their business too in here. So you can kind of see. Um, image, text, text, image, box, text boxes, free response. So they can type as long as they need. Um, sometimes some people type gives more information. Some people get a little more. So, um, yeah, you can see I keep it really simple um, and just pretty much boom, boom, boom. Um, but it makes everything come together 
and tie together like a whole and makes the experience so much easier and enjoyable for your client, which is what you want to do. Um, I promise you by using Dopsado and setting these systems up, you're going to impress them so much more, which you'll be able to charge more for. And I know that's always a good thing for everyone. So um, form. So they fill it out. We're having fun. And I'll show you the last thing. One of the last thing forms here is at the end of the project, I have them fill out a project feedback form. Um, and you can tell my style, I kept it simple, organized. Again, they fill out simple information here, like what if, if anything was confusing, was anything frustrating, so we can get things going. Um, I have them leave me a review. Um, I had them upload. Yes, this is the best thing I forgot to show you. So you can have this. This thing is called the file uploader. And you can, so your client can click on it and upload files. Isn't that amazing? So you can allow any, or it could just be images. So they can upload PDFs if they wanted to. Best thing ever. I'm in love with Upsado in case you haven't noticed. So, um, and then here in the last part of it, I have them say, hey, if you want to schedule a call with me, you can. And so if I click on that, it this is my scheduler. Um, and it tells me, hey, this is your call. And this is in red because this is the color that I chose. So I want to set up a call on Saturday, 1 p.m., submit and finish. It will ask me to fill out um, these details. So once I click finish, they will send me that auto um, email that I typed up, which is amazing. Um, so, yeah, that's that. Um, here, I'm trying to think. So packages. I personally have, don't set up the packages because each client is different. Um, so it's easier for me to do it only when um, the client is ready to go. But I will show you how that looks like. So you can add a package. Um, let's say the name item is branding 101, let's say. Um, and an invoice item, let's say branding 101. Um, project and then I will you can do this however you want it could be in bullet points um, so maybe I say primary logo secondary logo so you can include basically whatever that's included in your project and I would just put quantity of one so let's say if your package price is 450 you can do that if you have tax items you can add that as well which makes things really easy and then you can also apply a discount if you wanted to, um, as well as you can add a category name. So let's say I am doing design. I can't really type, so in case you haven't noticed. but <laughs> um, And then you can just add item, and that's your first package. So it makes things really easy for you to, so if you have regular packages, you can just pop it in there. So every time you do a proposal, you can just add packages in there um, and your client can select it um, and ready to go. Um, one easy thing I think will be helpful for you guys if, if I do this. So you can send your proposal, contract, and invoice in one go. So instead, if you don't want to send your client three different emails or two different emails, you can do this. So if you go to settings, under your proposal, you can set up your expiration date for the proposal. But in order to send your proposal, contract, and invoice in one go, you have to go to settings, click show contract. And if you don't have a contract assigned to this, it will ask you to assign one. So I'm going to assign my con project contract. So that's assigned. And then I'm going to say show invoice so it can go all at once. And it will ask you what payment schedule that you want this client to be on. So I'm going to say my 50-50. Allow client, and then it will ask you, hey, do you want to allow your clients to choose multiple packages from the proposal? If you do have that, you can allow that. I don't, so this is perfect for me. Um, you can allow them to add discounts, So um, and you can set it up. Um, so if you have a promo code, you can do that too here. Um, I haven't needed to do that. And you can... Um, 
customize what you want. So this is what they see once they click submit. Um, so you can add emojis, be you, um, and you can also set each of these forms to public or private. So when it's public, if you share that link to anyone, they can see it. So if it's private, they can't. Um, and then you can tell here, you can check yes or no. So if this is completed, if you want it, Dubsaw to auto-populate this as a new project, click yes. If not, click no. So um, I'm going to save that. And just to show you the canned emails, and then I will jump onto questions in a little bit. So these are the emails that I created, um, but they also have templates that are already set up. So these are the ones that are already there if you don't know where to start from. Um, send invoice. This is the email that's already done. Um, and then you can, it's basically set up so you don't need to worry about um let's say sand portal again set up um so they make it really easy for you um these are my emails that i set up and i absolutely follow by and swear by um i have things like hey if someone is a client isn't providing feedback in five days and they're postponing i send this email to them saying hey just a check-in that was due here. We need to complete it. Let me know. Um, so all these little reminders just make it very easy for me to um, basically keep up by not keeping up because um, no one has time to kind of always come back here and do that. And I also have these reminders set up. So when someone schedules a call with me, they get a reminder um, 24 hours prior with the link again um, and they are able to reschedule and cancel if they want to um, just to make it easy for them and then they get another reminder in four hours four hours before the call so that you're reminded again of the email the link and if they have to reschedule and cancel there's that for them just to make the process as easy as possible for them is super um, important for me in my business um, utilities wise, um, you can use all these. Um, I've been loving the, um, these are pretty much empty, but you have address book. I don't use this as much, but I love using a time tracker, especially for clients that I go by my hourly rate. Um, because essentially what you can do is go webinar. So let's say I'm working on Drops Auto webinar right now, and it'll ask me to select a project. Um, and I will say my hourly rate is, oh my goodness, it's not letting me do it. I need to add a project. So let's do that quick. <laughs> so new project, page. New client. I'm just doing this really quickly so I don't <laughs> take up more of your time. But no status. Uh, create project. Um, so basically, we can go to utilities, time tracker. The, the project is create new invoice and my hourly rate is 75 let's say and I can start tracking it so it will track it and then let's say if I only use five seconds it will auto populate and charge by your hourly rate and you can apply it to invoice right away so you can send that invoice to your client right away um, so if you go to your projects um, you can click on your client and you can see this, that item for five seconds is under their invoices. <laughs> so um, that's what it is. And this is where portal, let's see, let's do that. View. And this is the portal may or may not work. Um, let's see. So this is how I set up the portal to be. So this is the back end. And you can 
um, change the banner, you can change your logo, um, you can change this wording too. So it shows them like, hey, your invoice, you need to pay it. You have one item that you need to work on. And if they have emails they haven't read, it's going to show up here. So it makes it super easy for you. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing for a little so I can answer your questions. Okay. Okay. Oh, my goodness. We have a bunch of questions. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, I'm jumping through them. So if you have questions, just jump into it, and I'll just go down the list. Um, Teresa, love watching your financial goals bar move along. I love that too. Um, so basically, if you set up financial goals, it just goes. Um, if you don't set it, it kind of auto, at least for me, auto populates every month too, according to my previous months. Um, Teresa, so that second piece in the new lead workflow is something you need to trigger to remind you to create. Yes. So I think you're talking about to the to-do list, correct? So if that is something, okay. Um, and then do you do a video chat for every lead or is it just using every lead or is it just using Zoom? I use Zoom for um, basically everything just because I like the personal aspect of things. Um, some clients sometimes can't do a video call or um, I know personally sometimes I'm not as comfortable in video, but um, it's a good way to just be face to face with your client. So I would say just check back in with your client to see if they're comfortable or not. Um, that's super important. Uh, how do you share this form with the client? There is no share button. Um, so you can share your client. You can share um, the form with the client by sending a form. So I am going to go back and share really quick. So um, I can show you how I do that. So to share that form with a client. Um, you click on the client and you go to forms. So you can add the forms here. So these are all the forms that I have available, right? So let's say if I'm clicking them brand discovery questionnaire, I click that. Um, it will tell you, oh, this is the form. You can preview it. Amazing. And I click add. So if I ever need to just send them the link and not through like an email, I can click copy link and send it to that link through an email, messenger chat, whatever you please. I accept, I actually like to copy link and paste each of these things in my Asana project board to keep it easy for them. Um, and then you can edit if you have something you need to edit, if that makes sense. Okay, um, coming back here. Do you have your client sign, register, and use along with Dopsado? Yes, Charlene, I do. So they... They don't, they have to, um, yes, register, start an account with Asana and do Dubsado as well. Um, mm, Melissa, thank you. Uh, Michael, can you link in, Michael, can you link an Adobe portfolio site to Dubsado? Um, what do you mean by that? Like in an email? Um, yes, you can. Um, Basically, you can link anything in an email, just in a form. Yes, you can do that. Um, I would just say linking it in a link would be easiest. Um, you can for this form, for these forms, by the way, just to let you guys know, FYI, you can upload, um, you can upload a PDF for a questionnaire. Um, just to make your life easier. So if you're like doing a, if you're doing a proposal, entire proposal in InDesign and you don't want to do it through um, Dubsado, do it, export it, upload it. Uh, it makes it easy for you. Okay, Leah, schedule this button at your and learn how to set it up properly. <laughs> I know, um, it's kind of, yeah. 
Okay. Oh, but it froze. Here. Okay. Keep going. Charlene, is there a way to apply items to the client portal would get without them getting multiple emails? Yes. So um, you can apply every single form um, by doing this. So you can go to forms, add multiple forms in there. And then click apply to portal. Click apply to portal. That way they can just sign into the portal and look at everything at once instead of having five emails. Um, Let's see. Basically, do you have to build your site on the upside or have a forum link? Um, Michael, I would say if you're thinking about using the upside as your portfolio, then I don't think you're maximizing it as its best usage, if that makes sense. So it's more like a it helps you run your business. It helps you automate things. Um, if that makes sense, I would have a for the forms link from another site. Um, if that helps answer your question, Michael. Um, Charlene. So, uh, yep. Hopefully that was helpful for you. Um, did I answer all your questions? If not, please keep typing. <laughs> Um, cause I might have missed it or if there's anything else, um, or if, if there's anything else you want me to explain, I can definitely do that or show you. Here, I'm waiting on Michael to reword his question for a little bit and see. Yeah, I'll just say that there's a lot of ways for you to do this and for a way for you to use Dubsado. This is just how I use it. Um, and part of the things I love about this, hey, you can add a referral source. So this is what I like to do as well. Um, oh, Instagram, so if someone, you got the referral from Instagram, you can do that. So you can keep that going. Um, you can add tags. So let's say this is a branding project. So you always have tags um, in your dashboard, which makes things easy. Um, So see, it will tell you that tag is branding here. And thank you. I'm glad you guys liked it. Is there anything else that you guys think that you want me to show you or um, that will be helpful that needs explaining? Um, this is the best time to ask. And obviously, I'm also available if you guys... Um, want to reach out to me after this. I'm happy to show you that. Leah, how do you use the status feature? Okay, the status, you can set these things up. Um, and this is how I use it. This is not set up as I'm having in a different. So you can do customize. Um, and you can add your statuses here. So for leads, so let's say for leads, typically I do service guide inquiry because usually clients just want to know pricing first so that's usually my first step and then um the second thing i like to do is add a dead lead in my lead section so usually they fall under one or two so usually they if they're inquiring for pricing they're here if they're just inquiring for pricing they never respond they fall into dead lead so for jobs i'm just going to add one um, and i'm going to say onboarding job 
And then I'm going to say strategy install. It's okay. <laughs> um, so here. Um, so for this client, let's say, uh, for the four options that I just entered earlier, because she, um, this client is in leads, um, they will have these options. So let's say she is currently on service guide inquiry. So I would say personally, if you have uh, multiple clients, this will be good for you to kind of see things at a glance. Um, I personally like looking at these bars more than this. Um, because it tells me, oh, I have one client right now that's in service inquiry, or I might have five in dead leads. Um, and then again, too, it might show me that I have five clients that are currently onboarding. It will tell you like how you can juggle your items. Okay. Michael says, say I set up my contact appointment. Oh, okay. It's gone. Never mind. <laughs> Terrence, which workflows do you deploy based on project beginning and end? You talked about briefly, and I wanted to know if you use those dates as a tr other triggers. Um, yeah, so which workflows? I use a workflow. So I trigger my lead workflow i only have two that i like using um just because there's a lot of ambiguity in between when project starts and ends um i probably would implement an ending one soon but um not just yet so these are the only two i use so for the new lead one it gets triggered the minute they in they submit the inquiry form so it's set up in a point where they click submit the auto response sense right away. So this is what I had it set up in settings. Um, yep, so it tells them you can set up your workflow here in the form in settings. So I had it set up, apply workflow new leads. So the moment they tell me submit, that workflow starts right away. Um, and then for onboarding, um, it does the same thing as well. So as soon as I send them um, the project proposal, it starts. I um, hope that was helpful. Michael, say I set up my contact appointment button on my other website on Wix or whatever. Can that button be a link to Dubsado page? I believe so so i how you can do that is i think you can like redirect it in a way right biz please respond if you're like eh. <laughs> um i have not done that but what i have done is like hey someone does that and then it redirects them to a link so that would be helpful okay Alrighty, I think that was super. I hope I was able to answer your questions and help you guys um, and show you guys some things that you weren't sure about. I would say if you guys are like, I want to try this, try it. Um, you do have um, three clients to try it with, but they have a huge sale right now. And make sure you enter those giveaways for the forever plan worth it like it's worth it trust me um so if you have any other questions feel free to reach out to me after this i will happily help you and answer those questions for you um you can look for me at um, instagram this is my handle you can message me um or you can email me here i will send it in the chat box so you can reach out um I will respond to you, I promise, and help you as much as I can. Um, and if you do need my affiliate code to sign up, this is it. Um, it will give you an extra 20% off your first year or month. So I hope that was helpful for you. Um, and uh, have a great day, guys. Okay, bye.